Have you ever wondered how to make rope? Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. We kind of take it for granted nowadays because you can go into a store, you can buy this very cheaply, it's incredibly strong and durable, and you don't even think about where it comes from or how it's produced. The things that we take for granted today um, were incredibly important to, uh, to cultures, you know, even just a couple hundred years ago. So if you lived at a time when nails were not available to you, you had to lash everything together. Or if you want to make a fire with a bow drill kit, you need some sort of round cordage that you can use for that. Or if you want to shoot a bow and arrow, you need round cordage for that as well. So with this first note, we're going to talk about how to turn a couple of different native plants into cordage. We're going to be working with dogbane, one of two varieties available to us here in Montana. And we're going to be working with nine bark. Both of these are fantastic cordage materials, though there are things to know about each, about how to harvest and when to harvest. If you want to harvest dogbane, then you want to be down in the river bottoms. It's a smooth leaf, it's relatively large. Uh, they, they don't have a serrated edge or anything like that, and they, they grow opposite along the stem. They're, they're long, slender seed pods. In many ways, this plant really resembles milkweed. Dogbane is toxic, depending on where it's at in its life cycle. So you do want to be mindful of that. So I'm trying to select for last year's, and I cut them as low as I can get. It's, it's kind of tough to, to work past where they start to produce these little, um, these little stems off of here. So I cut them there. Nine bark grows all over the hillsides out here. The leaves, they're gonna turn red early on you in the summer. They look like a small maple leaf. Very different than your dog bane. You don't need the plant to be uh, dead and you're not harvesting the whole plant. You can actually remove the fibrous materials without harming it. Gently bend the stalk and you can see how it raises up. You see how the bark pops up off of the, the woody portion of the, the shrub here. And when that lifts up, I can grab it and I can pull that material free. Look at that, that's great. That's what you want. Something else I would like to stress with harvesting natural materials is gratitude. There's an idea called the reciprocal gift economy. And it's a fancy way of saying, if you receive a gift, you give thanks or you give a gift in return. If I receive a gift from the natural world, I want to be grateful for that gift. I want to honor what I collect and use it well and not waste it. Great, let's make some rope. With dogbane, I want the fibers off of the outside and I want to remove the pith on the inside. So first, I need to crush the plant. And I crush it flat. All the way down. So now it's flat and I turn it and crush it again. You may notice that I'm making four nice segments here. I choose an opening and I slide my thumb down the length of the stalk, opening the plant, and then I can lay it open with all four segments visible. What you're seeing on the inside is the internal structure of the plant and the sap. So that sap is dried now and is just this fluffy business in here. Now I need to get it out of there. So what I like to do is I, I process all four sections together. Some people like to do one at a time, whatever's comfortable for you. I take just about an inch 
I break it over my finger and I remove that pith from the inside and I am left with fibers. And I just continue that process. But there are tricks. You might notice that I'm not just ripping these free at the end, but I'm actually delicately removing them. If I break off these sections and I tear them now, once I've reached the end of this, I will likely remove a lot of this material behind me. And so if I kind of come back at me, then I pull them off very cleanly and I don't lose the fibers. And this is what I get. I have made the fibers that I will now use to make rope. There is a thicker end and there is a thinner end. If I want rope that is of equal thickness, I can do a couple of things. One, I can divide this in half and I can take the thin end from one side and put it with the thick end of the other side and I will now have even thickness rope or I can process a second stalk and lay it in opposite the first and I will have even thickness rope. This will not make great rope just as it is. There's a waxy layer on the outside of this plant that I need to remove. I can do that by rubbing it between my hands. Take a look at the difference, right? This is a little more processed than this. Just rubbing that between your hands makes it so much more fibrous and it's gonna make much nicer rope. This can be crazy long, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna go for a short one here so that I show you how it works. I double it over again because I want two pieces. If I am going to make a really long piece, I don't want them equal length. I actually want them offset because I'm gonna have to work some joints in here to add more material in and I don't want them to stop at the same spot or I'll just have a really weak spot in my rope. But for this, I'm gonna just end it here so I'll keep them the same length. I'm gonna process these the same way that I processed the dog bane. People like to hold it like this. You're not really gonna be able to twist that around your finger, you'll end up with a loop, unless you really want a loop. Um, so I pinch it so that they can really come together. I am twisting one of these strands out and away. So I'm rolling it away from me and I roll it to the point where it's stored energy and it's about ready to kink up. See how that just turned on itself? So I've stored energy and I stop before that happens. Then I bring this one over the other. That's the reverse part of the reverse wrap. I twist out and away. I flip over and towards. And then I pinch where they meet. Twist out and away, flip over and towards. Twist out and away, flip over and towards. And I continue this process. And what's happening here is I'm storing energy in this single strand going one direction. I'm reversing it on itself when it tries to unravel. It can't because it gets caught. And I continue this process and you can do it pretty fast. And I just continue this process and you'll notice I'm adjusting the grip with my non-dominant hand to pinch between my thumb and forefinger each time they meet. And I'm just continuing out and away, over and towards. Twist out and away, flip over and towards, twist out and away, flip over and towards. I do that again and again and again until I reach the end and I've made a piece of rope. The whole thing is so meditative. I think that's true of so many of these crafts. It's like they take a while, but you, you like develop this sense of muscle memory and, and there's like a feel to all of this stuff. Like, you know when this is breaking right and coming apart right. And you, you know when the rope is, is ready to process based on, on how it feels. This is gonna be an experiment. I always wait longer to harvest them until they've fully gone to seed. You know when a hide's ready to soften based on how it feels. You know when your spindle bites into your fireboard making fire because of how it feels. And you have to practice with it and work with it and take the time with these skills to really get to know them.
And there's just so much about this that is, you have to experience it 